Hello, people. I'm Ginny Matherall, and I am a fourth generation witch. Recently, I've been doing a little bit of nagging. I know, not great, is it? I know, I know. But the people I've been nagging are those who are solitary practicing witches. And they don't want necessarily to be solitary practicing witches. So I've been trying to persuade them to set up their own coven. And so it wasn't until a teenage follower of mine called Rosa said, but I don't know how to set up a coven, that I suddenly thought that nobody has got any idea, have they? So here is how to initiate and set up your own coven. Before we get started, I have to tell you about today's sponsor, Temu. Now, I understand that quite a lot of you find these sponsorship videos not the most exciting. So I thought that what better way than if I'm being sponsored by Temu to do an unboxing video, I could run it as a giveaway for you. So for the next three minutes, whatever I unbox from my sponsor, you can win. All you have to do is tell me which item or items you particularly like and put it down in the comment box below. And then in a couple of weeks, I will pick some winners and send these things to you. With that said, let's try and open this, which I think I need a knife. Temu has a great variety. It sells everything from fashion and makeup to gardening equipment. With free postage and packing and site-wide sales well, up to 90% off, there's great value to be had. With free shipping and free returns for 90 days, download the Temu app and using my link and code in the description box below, you can get up to £100 of coupons. So the first thing I unwrapped was this gorgeous display tree. I love it. And then... Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's this rather gorgeous candlestick. A 100% mulberry silk scarf with animals on it. And I used, my friends used to tease me and say I look like an air hostess, but I've always loved a silk scarf. I think that's rather beautiful. A gold-toned candelabra. A packable bag. This rather stunning crystal mermaid crown. A glass cleaning cloth. One of those metal scoops. Now this is apparently nanotape. It's the strongest sellotape that you can have and it's going to keep all my things attached to the wall. A wooden stand which I'm going to use to balance my abalone shell on. Some gold fringing for crafting purposes and a pop-up birthday card. Penny holes, or we call them tights. Oh, these are the ones which are double. So you put them on and they look like see-through, but actually they're really, really thick. Oh, brilliant. A calligraphy pen set and cartridges, vegetable peelers and oven-based liners. A stone cauldron oil burner. A black crow for my altar. A set of five glass screen protectors. Some Ziploc bags. A brass bunny. Some long dangly crystal earrings. Sterling silver hoops. Isn't it lovely? It's a moon water bottle. My moon water bottle has sort of died. A car mobile phone holder, dried gypsophilia and lavender. A silver coated copper ring. So here is everything I've got to give away. Name your favourite in the comments below and in a couple of weeks I'll pick a winner and send them to you. For everyone else, download the Temu app using my link in the description box below for £100 worth of coupons and a smooth shopping experience. So thank you, Temu. <laughs> I hope you found something that you liked in that unboxing video. 
Right, let's get on to the initiation of a coven. First of all, we need to know what is a coven. And a coven is simply a group of witches who get together quite regularly and practice witchcraft. Traditionally, it was considered the number 13 to be the optimal number for a coven. But my personal coven is only one of three because, you know, so the traditional number of 13 is all to do with the phase of the moons throughout the year. There's 13 moons within a year. So each coven would meet on a full moon or a new moon or halfway through a new moon, depending on, you know, what their preference was. And so this is why they thought that as they were following this natural world, you should have 13 of you. However, in my opinion, it doesn't actually matter how many members you've got. My online coven has over 100 members, for example, but my personal coven has only only three. And I know that they lots of people want to join that personal coven, but the other two coven members are like, I don't know them. No, they're quite shy, I think. So why would you have a coven? Covens are all about learning and increasing your magical ability. Every single one of us has magical ability and we might be better at some parts of magic than others. And so if you are in a coven, you can sort of cover all bases, so to speak. It also is an amplification. One person is not as strong as two people, who's not as strong as three people, etc, etc, etc. So the more people you have, the stronger the magic that you can create. Traditionally, covens were supposed to look at high magic. High magic. High magic, it helps communities, it helps um, groups of people. Whereas low magic, which is the opposite, would help individuals. So you're looking at, say, curing a wart or getting some money or bringing in a new lover. I don't like either of those terms, which is why you've never really heard me talk about them, because I think magic is magic and it doesn't really matter how you perform it. It's all great. So the first thing you need to do is to gather your members together and decide how often you're going to meet. The meeting, the traditional meeting was always at the full moon or the new moon, depending on your preference. Um, I am personally like a full moon because it's got some more light and you can see. However, a new moon is just as good. Next, you need to consider the time. Will it be dusk or dawn or midnight? I mean, my coven all meet in the morning because, you know, we're all terribly, terribly old and like to do a bit of covening and then have some lunch. You know, that's us. The second thing you need to do is decide on a name. Um, I have to say, the covens of old had the most boring names, like, you know, the New Forest Coven, the Kitchen Witch Coven, the Bricket Wood Coven. You can call your coven anything or nothing. In fact, my personal coven doesn't have a name, nor does my online coven. Actually, I might run a competition for someone to name my coven. I'd love to hear your suggestions on that. The next thing you have to do is to look at the structure of your coven. Are you going to have a coven which is very democratic, so highest votes wins? Are you going to have a coven with a leader whose word is final? This is really important. You do need to know the boundaries of your coven. For example, one member one month might want to do healing magic and one member might want to do magic for cash. And so therefore you've got to decide how you're going to choose. Now, I would no more be a coven leader than I would the man in the moon, but that's just pure laziness on my part. I'm not interested in leadership. I'd far rather other people told me what to do. It's much easier. And that never happens. I'm always thrust into the limelight, onto the leadership, really against my will. I have no desire to lead people. Anyway, here I am leading people. So <laughs> decide what sort of structure you need because it is important. And then lastly, when you've decided all of these issues, you've got your name, you've got when you've got to meet, you've got your members sorted out, you've got your structure organised. In order to make your coven successful, you should have an initiation. So the very first thing you would have to do is to each of you cleanse yourselves. It's really important not to go to a group meeting ever without 
doing a purification ceremony. In the West Country, where I live, there's loads of sacred wells which were known to be wells for purification. So in the old days, you'd have a bath in the sacred well. However, you don't have to do that here. Um, just make sure you're clean. And then take some incense with you and give each other a smudge. Pull off any negative energies that you can feel and make sure that every person is clear and cleansed of their aura with smoke. So lighting a fire, for instance, in the centre of your circle is an excellent way to manage this. You can light a sacred fire and each of you can then walk around through the smoke of it. However, you can use incense sticks too, up to you, depending on how you would like to do this. Once everyone is beautifully cleansed, then you can begin the circle. You and your members will cast a circle and the circle, we will say, we cast this circle for the greatest and highest good of this coven. Now, there is going to be initiation for each member into that coven and here is what I would suggest you do. Each of you stand around the circle and then together you will initiate the coven, something along the lines of we are going to call ourselves the Golden Dawn Coven and this is our initiation ceremony. So then I would get each member to come forward, stand in the centre of the circle and ask. And the formula that I used, I think, was I asked to be initiated into this coven. I promise to support, help, learn in every way that I can. And the rest of the coven members would then say we accept X, Y, Z into our coven and we promise to support and help them to our greatest and highest ability. And there you have it. Your coven is now initiated and you can begin to do the workings of magic. Two points to remember. Every time you meet, cast a circle for the greatest and highest good of the coven or to protect and keep the coven safe, whatever is your preference. Make sure that you all ritually purify and cleanse yourselves at the beginning of each coven meeting. I would love to know if you're going to set up a coven or you've got your own coven and what on earth your name is. I really must come up with some names in mind. In fact, I'm definitely going to do a competition on that one. If you want to come and join my coven, do go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill and you'll find the coven meeting tier available for you. Or you can just join as a witchling because it really is helpful to me and enables me to continue making these videos for you. And finally, of course, don't forget to leave the name of any of the items that you would like to win below so I can choose some winners and send them to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I love a subscriber and I will see you next week. <laughs>